going to freeze dry some blended peach yogurt and some strawberry yogurt. I'm going to do these as little drops. Uh, we've done them as drops. We've done them as kind of logs. Uh, we've done them just as slabs. But this one, I'm going to start with drops. But I've got an empty one, an empty yogurt container, and lined with a one gallon zipper bag or Ziploc. Okay, so I'm going to stir that up a bit. It's pretty well stirred already, so mainly need to get it into the other one, into the Ziploc. So now, can okay, now I can take that out. And you could use a piping bag, of course, or a spoon. Just a little piece off the end. And then just start making a bunch of little dots. And you can have them pretty much any size you want. But if you keep them very small, it could be really useful in like trail mix or snack bags. Uh, so it could be kind of nice. And you can, if you go kind of in the center and then pull up, then you get more of a Hersey Kiss kind of shape. And if you had skills, you could probably get all kinds of shapes. I don't have skills. So you can see it goes pretty quick. Now I'm going to make some a little bit bigger. Okay, those are going into the freezer for pre-freezing. Then we'll put them in Ziplocs. Uh, until it's the day to freeze dry these. So I'm a little bit short on time again. Um, it's quarter to nine at night. I want to get this batch of yogurt in tonight. The trays have been cleaned. They're in the freezer pre-freezing. And I want to get this defrosted faster. I've only given it about an hour to defrost so far. And depending on what the load is, uh, the defrost usually takes from two to four hours, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less, depending on the temperature of the room, the humidity, and how much ice is in there. And since all of these batches are big that I'm doing for this series, a lot of them have a lot of ice. And same with this one. So that's going to take more time to defrost. Um, so to speed that up, I'm going to take the ice out again. And then it'll be ready quite quickly. So I'm going to very gently pull the seal off. So it's had enough time to defrost that the ice should be loose from the sides now. Yep, it is. Okay, so that's loose. I've got my little grabber. So yeah, big old chunk of ice out of there. That seemed to really do a good job having this on there. It seems like the ice that usually would hit the side of here and start resublimated um, or resublimating, it seemed like it stayed there and built up nicely. Now, let's see if we can get the other side. Oh, hopefully my timing will be better on the rest of this series because I don't really like taking this out and doing it this way, but in a rush, you can do it this way. Yeah, fair amount of ice. I'm going to rotate this rack a little bit. That way any water on any of the shelves or on top will pour off of there. Put it back into position and we'll get the seal back on. Again, I have a, a line at the top so I know where the top is. I just hold it at the top, put that next to that little screw and just get it started just very gently. And then I use the door itself to finish pushing it into place so that it's nice and even. Okay, now give that maybe another 
half hour to finish drying out a bit and then pre-cool it and get it uh, reloaded. So with all the ice out of there, now we'll put the, the fan back in the door and let it defrost or let it dry for another half hour or so and then get it pre-freezing for the next batch. Uh, it's just about nine o'clock. By 9.30, I should be able to get it pre-freezing. Definitely by 10, be able to get it pre-freezing. Half hour to an hour later, I'll be able to get the food in there. All right. It's about a half hour later and the freeze dryer is dry and ready to pre-cool and load. So I forgot to press the little button to record the audio. Anyway, so now we'll take off the defrost fan and take the little uh, defrost baffle out. Then I put the acrylic disc in place and close the door. Okay, I started the pre-cooling just a few minutes ago, about five and a half minutes ago. Once it's down below about 10 degrees, we'll start getting the yogurt drops onto the trays and getting them ready. The freeze dryer has been pre-freezing for about 45 minutes. It's about 11 degrees or 10 degrees. So now it's time to get the food in there. Nice cold tray. Gonna add the parchment paper and get my tear weights. Again, they shouldn't change. So everything should, should be fine. So here's the yogurt drops and I, or the little, the little piped yogurts. Now for this tray, we need 1889 to get it to the two and a half pounds. I don't know if I have enough of the one flavor. I might have to mix a tray or, or divide a tray. So 1889 on this one. So there's 1889 on there or close enough. It's bouncing a little. And I'll level them out a little bit. So it's pretty full as usual. And all of these would do better if I stopped at six or eight pounds. But again, this challenge is to do 10 each batch so I can get the 500 pounds in 100 days. Okay, tray one is in there. Okay, tray two. Now this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because again, I don't think I have enough. So I'm going to be ready with a plan. Okay, so I need 1881 on this one to get the two and a half pounds. Now, I'm going to add this. So that's 759. So I'm adding two grams to that one. And what I'm going to do is fold that. Okay. And then the peach ones. So I'll add a, a bit more. And it wouldn't hurt to have them mix. Okay. Okay, tray, tray three. Need to get this one to 1876. That's close enough. And tray four. All right, 1884 to be the two and a half pounds. I have just exactly what I need. So I'm gonna just kind of nestle the thermometers in there because the pieces are too small to drill into. That'd be kind of not worth the effort. This would give me something. Now, get them over there. So it's been pre-freezing now for just about one hour. It's down to zero. So we'll get those in there and get them started. So starting at the bottom, tray four. And the yogurt stayed nice and cold. 
They're about 10 degrees still. So nice and chilly. Okay. So looks like we got the seal ring around there. Got a little space right there. I'm going to go ahead and just give that the least little bit of twist. That looks like that's all it needed. Uh, it's got five more hours before it uh, switches over to the drying. Um, and since I won't be awake, it'll go another five hours. If I were awake, I could start it earlier, but I'm not going to bother. And of course, the newer machines uh, sense that and start earlier when it's when it thinks it's cold enough. Uh, with the older ones, it's timed base. Except for the main dry, it still senses when it thinks it's dry enough and skips the rest of the 30 hours of the main dry. Hardly ever goes the full 30 hours of main dry. We'll be back. Uh, well, check it tomorrow, next day. It'll be done by... Uh, it's May 24th. It'll be done by May 26th, and we'll get the next batch in there. Freeze dryer finished just a minute or two ago. I hate to ever let it stop and go through the, all the way to the end because the last 15 minutes the heaters are off and then the trays start to cool down. And then if I didn't see it happen, I never know how long it's been. Then once the trays get really cold, if you take them out, you'll get condensation, uh, which we definitely don't want. So I like to skip that last 15 minutes and take them out before that happens and get them out while they're still toasty warm. Uh, this time I know it just finished, so I know that they haven't had a chance to cool down very much. So we'll get them and that we're putting them back in uh, for a final dry check. So I'm going to take them out, then get them back in, see if they're done. So open the drain valve. And let's see what we have. And as usual, I'm going to rotate the trays top to bottom to make sure that they all had a, the warmest spot possible. Still says it's about 100 degrees on that tray. So these are some of these strawberry yogurt bits. Okay, so tray one. And then I'll go to tray four so I can rotate it up. And this tray has cooled down more already. I'll put this one up at the top, tray one down at the bottom. So then tray two, and tray two is the one that has the mixed ones on it. And then I'll be putting that one up a shelf, and this one will go down a shelf. All right, so now I have them in there one through four from top to bottom, or bottom to top. So I'll give that a couple more hours. If there's no more drop, then I know that they're dry right now, and I can use that time for how long did it take time. If it drops more weight, then I'll put it in another couple hours until it stops dropping weight. Since I'm right here, I don't worry too much about the ring being uh, solid around there, because I'm going to start it right now while I'm standing here. I really am concerned about that ring if I'm setting it up and it's going to start four or five hours later while I'm not here because that allows air to go through and sometimes you get a little bit of ice on there and then it doesn't seal as well as quickly. Okay, more dry time and close the drain valve. Done. Continue and it's still cool. So it's sealed nicely, instantly, so there's no problem at all. We'll come back and check it later. Almost two hours later, time to check it again. Hopefully they're dry already. Or if they didn't lose weight, that means they were dried two hours ago, and I can write down that time for how long it took. Get the drain valve open. And then get that door open. Let's get them out. Okay, tray one. 983, no change. Tray two. 975, less than one gram. Tray three. 
961, no change. And tray four. Okay, that one did drop a teeny bit. Huh, I should have moved it down here. Uh, two hours and it's bouncing uh, between one gram down and so it's got about a gram loss in two hours. I'm going to be happy with that. With everything else being dry. Get that stopped. All right, so I'm going to get that's in. All right, got that emptied. Going to get it defrosting for the next batch. Uh, the next batch might be a very short batch. It'll be something completely different. In the meantime, there's the water from the previous batch, which was the mixed berries. And you can see it's like very uh, at the very, very top. So it's more than a gallon. So a good amount of water out of there. We'll get the thermometer out. So get the fan on and get it defrosting. I'll get the thermometers out and then we'll get them weighed. So 973, tray two, 950, tray three, and tray four. Got the weights. I'll check the, the math, find out how much goes in each bag or how much per pound. We'll have to check to see what will fit in a bag. Uh, the little piped yogurt drops are done. Uh, took about 38 hours and gonna get ready to bag them. I'm not sure how much is gonna fit in a bag. So I've got the bag labeled, but without the weight on it so far. And then I'll add the weight. And on these, I would envision using these mostly as a snack. Uh, so not necessarily as rehydrated, but I'll still put the amount of water needed to get it back to what it was before in case I want wet yogurt. Uh, so I've got two different flavors here. So I'm going to try to bag them with one flavor in a bag. It might have a crossover one if I need to, just to get everything to be even. And I don't know how many bags it's going to take to fit. So let's get bagging and find out. Okay, it ended up with 854 grams of yogurt after it's dried and it took out 3,685 grams of water. So now I know how much yogurt is per pound and how much water needs to go back in per pound. So we'll get a test, find out what will fit. So tray one. So let's see what will fit. Okay, 70. That's a little bit more than three quarters of a pound, but I'm not gonna be able to get a full pound in there without crushing them. And I don't wanna crush these. So I'm going to take it out to 64. So I need just over 64 grams, just barely. So basically 64 grams. Oh, I want to use the more sensitive scale for this. So I need some of them to be just slightly under 64, slightly over. So there we go. It's going for three quarters of a pound. So I'll label the rest of the bags and we'll be back. All right, so I've got them labeled three quarters of a pound and that it needs 276 grams of water if I want to get it back to what it was. So I think I could, I could have stuffed a pound in there, but then they're going to break up a lot. So I just stopped at three quarters of a pound. And that gave me a few extra bags and that's still a good size amount. Okay, and get tray two. And I'll just pour the rest of those on there. Now it's time for the oxygen absorbers. I ended up with 14 quart bags because I only put three quarters of a pound in each, except for one, which only has about five and a half ounces worth. And again, always that's the dry weight and then I also have how much ox how much water is needed to bring it back to what it was before uh, so if I want it back to a similar consistency I can add on this one 276 grams of water and that should be pretty close usually we go a little slow on it and then it can soak it up and and you can have it a little thicker a little thinner 
So I'll get the oxygen absorbers in there and then we'll get them heat sealed. So I'm gonna kind of tuck it down just a little bit. All right, and I'll get those next. So I'm not going to, I'm not gonna try to squish out a bunch of air because these are fairly fragile and they'll crush. The oxygen, absorber, the oxygen absorber is going to take care of it, so I'm just going to zipper it shut and hopefully they won't all crush. Uh, even if they powder, they, you can still mix them up with the water and make yogurt. Or use them in things. So get the other four. Then I just reheat seal the rest and write on it how many is left in there so I'll we'll know. Heat seal time! I'm going to lift this up a little to really see it. I make sure that the top of the bag is smooth and covering the seal area because the, the seal is five millimeters wide across the top. So I want the full seal width on there. Okay. And then the first bag, I'm going to double up to make sure that it gets nice and warm and melty. And let it set for a few seconds. And perfect seal. So if it's not a great seal, if there's a fold or something in it, I'll add another one in the area below it. I've been asked a few times about the scoop I use when I'm bagging. Uh, the scoop is just a, a french fry scoop that I bought on Amazon. And then I trimmed off the two sides uh, with a saw. And then I 3D printed new ends and then glued them in place. And somebody asked me about that also. And then I realized, uh, because they didn't have a 3D printer. And then I realized that I could have just used the original pieces I cut off, warmed them up a bit, um, either with a heat gun or over a toaster or, or in the oven, and just flatten them out. So I did that as a test and it worked. And then you could sand them to fit that spot and then glue them into place. Anyway, it fit the trays real nice and, and the little bit taller sides kind of help uh, guide the things into the scoop. If you're interested, I did make a video of the way I did it. Okay, one last thing before I put them in the bins. I'm going to add a gross weight on each bag. So 88 grams. And I'm just going to put that it's 88 grams on the bottom corner of the bag. That way if they fail later, for whatever reason, I'll know what the weight should be of the full bag. So when those are all finished, we'll go put them in the bins. The piped yogurt drops are all bagged, put it in 14 bags, going to put it in bin 3, uh, then we'll move on to the next batch. We probably could have put these in less bags, well, we could have put these in less bags by doing other methods. For instance, if we'd crushed and powdered these, these would fit in a lot less sp uh, space. But I really like these little drops as a snack, a little dry snack. If they're any bigger, it's a lot of dry. Uh, but I can also add them to other things for just a little dot of flavoring of yogurt. Anyway, we'll get them in the bin and see what's next. So, we'll get those in there. And I guess I could take a quick check. You can see the berries from a couple days ago. Uh, the the 20% uh, of the uh, volume of air is gone because the oxygen has been absorbed. So it's kind of squished down around those. So we'll go through, nestle all these in there, and that'll be it for this one. So we still have enough room for at least one more batch in here. So we'll find out what's next. Um, hopefully I can show you all this, but I might have to voice over it because there's a little bar on the screen that shows me that the sound is working because you have to press a whole button to get sound. But can I remember that? No. Okay. 
So two hours and just one ounce, I'm going to, uh, one ounce. Wow, that would be horrible.